The second case of the Mumon Khan, Hyakujo and the Fox. This case is about Master Hyakujo, a.k.a. Ekai Zenji. In Mumon Khan, he appears several times. This is one of the most difficult cases in this collection. In the world where there is the Zendo and the many rules of the Zendo, the different positions given the names, such as Jiki Jitsu Joko, Jishario, the instruments that we use for the sounding, Mokugyo, Taku, the various bells names. These are all coming from this very master Hyakujo. We know what these words refer to because it was Hyakujo, Ekai Zenji, who organized all of these. Before him, there were no monasteries with such rules. The monks would stay randomly at usually at the Rishu temples. The Rishu temples were the temples where the precepts were taught and the whole daily behavior was taught there. But then the number of people who were coming there to train, who wanted to practice for awakening, those numbers increased. And only preceptual education was no longer sufficient. From that time on, the dojos with their purpose as being awakening were born and formed. And of course, it is not that precepts are unnecessary for that, but that the combination of precepts, sutras, and practice were all combined to realize that state of mind of awakening beyond any words and phrases. For this, Master Hyakujo made the rules called Hyakujo's Rules, an official statement about this. Dogen Zenji left the Fukan Zazengi, and this was taken from the rules of Hyakujo's rules. Hyakujo Zenji's rules as well were given so that people had the clear fulcrum points of Zazen very consistently and dependably, dependably taught as a way to realize the path of awakening. These Hyakujo's rules became the basic rules from that time on through today for the way of living, for the way of being in a Zendo. This case of Hyakujo and the Fox was included by Mumon Ekai Zenji when he compiled the 48 cases of the Mumon Khan, the first of which is the koan with which Mumon Ekai Zenji himself was awakened, the case of Joshu's Mu. And this is not the first case by coincidence. It was this first case with which he himself was awakened and for that to be taught, the teaching of the Buddha saying all beings are Buddha nature, to be able to realize the awakening to that truth. This was for all people necessary, first of all, to realize not being just thankful for something wonderful and to be thankful to in the world like a Buddha nature with a name like that to be so thankful to it, but in order to realize what that actually is through our own experience, to extinguish our ego attachment at its very roots, in order to realize our actual true and original nature. We cannot know the Buddha nature with our mental and conceptual version of what we think the words mean, but rather prior to all intellectualization, that mu is most direct for helping us realize that, keeping it alive, whether we're sleeping, standing up, laying down, walking, not to let go of that focus on that mu, in order to let go of everything. This is how we clarify the path of Zen, to realize our truest human nature's experience, the true belief in the nature of all people. This is the central point of the first case of Mumon Khan. This word, world became clear that one, in everything, there is no discrimination, all is equal and without differentiation. We become able to realize that there is no separation between an ordained person and a lay person, heaven and earth. These are all things that we have designed words to be able to put separately when they actually are non-differentiated. And then to not give away any attention 
to our version, our mental version of the differentiation in things because we have then seen with our own experience that murky ego attachment and been able to sever it, we are no longer attached to this dualistic version of things. No flaccidness or confusion or indecision any longer in our state of mind. We cannot ignore this state of mind or we are ignoring the whole main point of being alive to not realize that our experiencing of this true deepest original mind is what is most important. And of that, it is how it becomes we will lose, if we, if we don't realize the importance of this and how we can become it, we will lose track of how to liberate people. <coughs> A world of people with no true seeing, no ability to realize that is what then occurs. <coughs> people who have no interest or concern for the liberation of other people. And if that is the way that Buddhism is turning out people, we are better without that Buddhism. And if people have no interest in the suffering of others, <coughs> Buddhism would be of no use in the world with each person only thinking that only their good fortune is of any importance. If we are only interested in our own self-centered satisfaction, then we are more of a poison to the society than of something useful. This case is to illuminate that world where all <coughs> is in evenness and without discrimination, or we become an immoral world, but there has to be a true awakening to human's deepest quality, and this we will then naturally offer to all of our efforts to give to the liberation of all beings, and this is why the Mumonkan second case is taught. Hyakujo Zenji at Hyakujo Mountain established a Zendo where there were 1,500 people doing training together. And from there came the great masters Obaku Zenji, Isan Zenji. One day when Hyakujo Zenji was teaching the assembly, the assembled 1,500 monks, as would happen every day when everyone was gathered there, an elderly last person came into the room and stood behind all the assembled others. And then he left before anyone else, so no one in the room could see him, except for Hakujo Zenji, who was facing the back and could see how he did this every day. Only Hakujo Zenji could see this, but one day this elderly person stayed behind. Hakujo Zenji asked him who he was. He said he was not a human being, but at the time of the Kasho Butsu, who was before the Shakyamuni Buddha, he had been the abbot there. And one day, a monk had asked him whether an enlightened person would fall into cause and effect. And he had answered immediately, of course not. And from that moment, for 500 lives, he had been reborn into the body of a fox. He asked Master Hyakujo how his answer had been mistaken. What should he have said so that he would not have become a fox? Please liberate me. The man treated Master Hyakujo. The old man then asked Hyakujo, does an enlightened man also fall into causation or not? The master said, he does not ignore causation. Hearing this, the old man was at once enlightened. Making a bow to Hyakujo, he said, I have now been released from the fox body, which will be found behind the mountain. I dare to make a request of the master. Please bury it as you would a deceased monk. In this way, he asked Master Hyakujo to bury him properly because he had been the former abbot there. There was this episode at the time of Master Yakujo. Zenji was asked by the former abbot of 500 years ago how he should have answered the question. This abbot from the ancient time of the Kasho Butsu, he had continually been born into the pitiful body of a fox, 
until the present abbot said to him, he does not ignore causation. And he was immediately released, released, it says. Is there really any such idiotic thing possible as this? Where in this world, where there are people who do good things, people who do terrible things, people who do all kinds of varieties of behavior, if they could be saved just by some words like that, suddenly changing them, how could he have been freed in that way from the body of a fox? But if we ourselves reflect inwardly at our own behavior, how many types of various humans even there are, man, woman, old, children, people who are behaving well, not behaving well, wise, not so wise. We are all carrying around a human face, but who knows what is going on in each of us, really? The former abbot was miserable as a fox, just like some people in their in the world are very happy and satisfied with how their lives are, and some are really not happy at all with how their lives are. Who can say that it is bad to be a fox or not to be a fox? But if we are happy with who we are, we don't want to change our position. We cannot be deceived by the words of this case. So how then should we look at it? There is a koan from the Prajnaparamita Sutra, the Manjusri section of it, which is because the Bodhisattva Manjusri is a representation of everything being equal and in oneness. This koan goes, the well-behaved bhikkhu does not enter hell. The badly behaved bhikkhu does not enter hell. The well-behaved person of training does not enter nirvana. In this manjusri section, being that representation of all as being equal, this question is being asked in that context. For really seeing this koan, the badly behaved bhikkhu does not enter hell. The well-behaved person of training does not enter nirvana. To really see this koan to its roots, even while many who have passed it or have been passed through it think that they have, it's rare that it has happened, if it ever, has it ever happened, because we have to cut ourselves away to the very root to become this koan, or it is all only a self-centered situation of a monk who doesn't go into nirvana and someone else doesn't go into hell in this same way, this koan of the fox is a very impossible to realize koan. The same is for those two monks, to realize that state of mind of the koan completely. We cannot pass a koan without dropping all of our egoistic views completely. And how few can do that? If that former abbot was truly saved from becoming a fox again, it was because, as is written here, he was awakened deeply at that instant that he was given the second answer. And it is that which liberated him, not the fox body problem being resolved. This has to be experienced, not just mentally understood. Or this he told the Eno to gather everyone, and after the noon meal said there would be a funeral for a priest. They should all come and be dressed formally accordingly. The monks were all confused since no one among them had died. For whom was this funeral was for whom was this funeral to be? And then Yaku Jozenji led everyone out to the big mountain behind where he went to behind this big mountain where there was a large rock, and from there he pulled out a dead fox. The funeral was done. And then that evening when everyone was gathered, he gave this story and told everyone there about it. He said when they were all gathered, the former abbot had been liberated by being told not ignoring causation. We all have to reflect on this, on our own behavior. If we are insecure, uncomfortable with how our life is and who we are, we are like the fox. If we have deep faith, and are motivated in doing what we know is the best possible world for us, we are Buddhas. If we are insecure and confused about the way we are doing things, we stay a fox, still moved around by every little thing. 
if we are not moved around by anything at all. This is what is most important, but each person has to see their true essence clearly to see this. That evening's teaching, Hakujo was asked by the monks, to which he answered with glaring eyes, how have you all realized this? And when he said that, only Ap Obaku stepped forward. In the evening, the master ascended the rostrum in the hall and told the monks the whole story. Obaku thereupon asked, the old man failed to give the correct turning words and was made to live as a fox for 500 lives, you say. If, however, his answer had not been incorrect each time, then what would he have become? He asked this question, and at this question, his master was very delighted. If the power which had been this disciple of of Master Hakujo's Obaku had been given a deep awakening by the teacher Baso Doi Tsuzenji. When he gave a great shout, Hyakujo at that time, Obaku at that time was completely awakened. Later, when asked if he would be, if Obaku would become the disciple, the transmitted to person who would be a successor to Master Baso or to Master Hyakujo with whom he trained, he answered while he was deeply taught by Baso's great, huge energy and teaching. His essence was given from Master Hyakujo, and therefore he would become the successor of Master Hyakujo, because if he did not continue in that way, there would be no further successors coming. Hearing that, Hyakujo was very pleased to hear this. That night, when Obaku asked Master Hyakujo, what would he have become if he hadn't become a fox? The Master said, come closer to me, I'll tell you. Obaku then stepped forward to Hyakujo and slapped him. The master laughed aloud, clapping his hands and said, I thought a foreigner's beard is red, but I see that it is a foreigner with a red beard. This night, Obaku Zenji came forth. Obaku was challenging him. Why is it bad to be a fox? Obaku was not fooled by Hyakujo's show of strong energy responding to this assembly about this case. And when Obaku said that, Hyakujo answered in this way, this is what you wanted to teach. And he slapped Hyakujo's face. But instead, Hyakujo laughed and said, of course, after all, he had done this to awaken the whole assembly and was delighted with Obaku's help in the doing of that. Of course, he challenged the assembly on just how this actually could be possible to save someone with a sentence in this way. Just as Mumon Ekai had said in the first chapter of the Mumon Khan, if you want to really understand this, you have to perceive the truth in the way where it is done with such clarity that you shake the heavens and the earth trembles, where everything is crashing in a way where you are walking hand in hand with all of the ancients and the patriarchs in the joyful samadhi of true play in the marketplace, we are all caught on this wheel of existence, the becoming of a being in hell, the becoming of the being of a hungry ghost, the becoming of the being of an angry warrior, and even being human or heavenly beings. If we become a bodhisattva and we are opening our clearly seeing eye, we are becoming like those two monks, one who is a badly behaved bhikkhu who does not fall into hell, the well-behaved person training who does not fall into nirvana, we are living it totally and completely, not doing it for our own good fortune, but doing it for all others. And we will not be moved around by even the pain of sitting long zazen. To find the meaning there, if we think about ourselves, then we will be in pain. That deep faith and motivation where we are doing this for all beings, and you will truly realize that awakened state in the very doing of this, but it has to be done without any doubt or hesitation, in which case we can break through in this one session. Whether it is zazen, or no matter what we are doing, if we are always worrying about why we are not awakened yet, we stay moved around 
But when we can become this very moment only, becoming it totally and completely, as Master Mumun has said, in this way, not failing, not ignore, not falling, not ignoring, odd and even are on one dice, not ignoring, not falling, hundreds and thousands of regrets. It is about this deepest faith. It has nothing to do with ignoring or falling into causation. There is only this day. There is only this one moment. There are no second chances in this life. This is present moment. It can only come once, right now. And if we don't see this clearly, we cannot understand this case.